Reality feels like this solid, unchangeable thing we can all agree on. But quantum physics is showing us something completely mind-blowing. Our consciousness might actually be creating the world around us. You know what fascinates me most about this? The way quantum mechanics is starting to overlap with neuroscience. The double slit experiment really turned everything we thought we knew upside down. Let me break this down because it's absolutely crucial to understanding how deep this goes. When scientists observe particles in this experiment, they behave completely differently than when they're not being watched. It's like the act of consciousness itself is changing physical reality. That's exactly what I was thinking about. How do we explain that observation literally changes the behavior of matter at its most fundamental level? Well, here's where it gets even more interesting. Recent studies in quantum biology are showing that our DNA and neurons might be operating on quantum principles. We're not just talking about some abstract physics experiment anymore. This is happening inside our own bodies. So you're saying our thoughts could be directly influencing physical reality at a cellular level? That's pretty revolutionary. And the evidence keeps stacking up. The Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Programme found that human intention could actually influence physical systems. They ran tests for nearly three decades and found statistically significant results showing people could affect random number generators just by thinking about it. That reminds me of that groundbreaking 2017 study where they found people's brainwaves would shift before they even started problem-solving tasks, almost like their minds were reaching into the future. Exactly right, and this ties directly into what neuroscience is telling us about neuroplasticity. Every single thought we have is literally rewiring our neural pathways. We're not just passive observers, we're actively constructing our reality moment by moment. How does this connect to Vadim Zelan's concept of mental slides? Because I see some fascinating parallels there. Well, Zelan's work suggests that the more you rehearse a desired reality in your mind, the stronger those neural pathways become. And now we have the neuroscience to back this up. Studies show that visualization actually creates the same neural patterns as physical practice. That makes me think about the implications for success and achievement. If our thoughts are literally shaping our reality, wouldn't that mean we need to be incredibly careful about what we focus on? That's precisely where the research on pendulums comes in. These massive energetic structures created by collective thought. Think about how social media algorithms work. They're not just reflecting reality, they're manufacturing it. Studies show that emotions like fear and outrage can spread exponentially through these networks. So what you're saying is that by engaging with these negative thought patterns, we're actually strengthening them. Exactly. And here's the fascinating part. Research in emotional regulation shows that non-reactive responses can reduce workplace and social conflict by up to 70%. It's like psychological Aikido. Instead of fighting against something, you simply step aside. That's really interesting because it connects to what we know about stress and performance. When we are too attached to outcomes, our amygdala gets triggered and performance can drop by up to 30%. And the flip side of that is equally fascinating when people enter what's called a flow state, where they're fully engaged but not attached to outcomes, their productivity can increase by up to 500%. It's like tapping into what Zelan calls the wave of fortune. So how do we actually apply these principles in practical terms? What are the concrete steps people can take? Well, the research points to three main approaches. First, spend five minutes every morning using mental slides, vividly imagining your ideal reality. Studies show this increases goal achievement by 65%. Second, practice stepping aside from pendulums. And when you feel emotionally hijacked, pause instead of reacting. And third, Train yourself to take action without over-attachment to results. That reminds me of the research on elite athletes. When they focus on process instead of outcomes, their performance improves by about 30%. Exactly. And what's really exciting is that we're just scratching the surface. The latest studies in advanced brain imaging are starting to uncover the actual mechanics of how consciousness influences reality. What we once dismissed as mysticism is now being studied at leading research institutions. So where do you see this field heading? What's the next frontier? 
The implications are staggering. If our consciousness is actively shaping reality rather than just perceiving it, it completely changes how we think about personal development, education, even therapy. Some researchers are already exploring how these principles could revolutionize mental health treatment. That's fascinating. It's like we are discovering that we have this incredible power that we've been using unconsciously all along. And now that we're becoming aware of it, we can start using it intentionally. The research suggests that understanding these principles alone can increase positive outcomes by up to 40%, simply because people start paying attention to how their thoughts shape their reality. So what you're saying is that this isn't just theoretical, it's something people can start applying right now to improve their lives. Absolutely right. And the beauty is that it doesn't require any special equipment or training. It's about becoming aware of how our thoughts and focus shape our experience and then making conscious choices about where we direct our attention. That's really empowering. It puts the power back in people's hands. And that might be the most important takeaway from all this research that we're not just passive observers of our lives, we're active participants in creating our reality. The question is, how will we use that knowledge 